Today we're going to be going over the sound interface for Director, and it's very easy to get to. Just go up here where it says sound, click sound, and voila, sounds right here. Here's a few I've chosen to work with, and we'll just click on this here like that, and this will ask you, do you want to make this the scene length? Uh, and sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Uh, in this situation I will, but you're not relegated to this link. I can move the thing around like this. And if you, for some reason later, realize you want it to be that length, or you end up moving this by accident, and you're just like, oh, it needs to be exact, uh, you just need to go up to scene, make scene length equal equal to sound. There we go. So that is like that. Uh, generally, you're not going to want uh, this long of an audio track in your in your scene, unless it's the ambient scene, which means you would have music looping through and playing and all that stuff there. Uh, the scenes used to only support 36 minutes, but it has uh, now been doubled. It is now 72 minutes. So a lot of people used to use the audio as a timer function before the timer function was added to the game. So you don't have to do that anymore, uh, but you can if you want. So there you go. So here's the audio as it is. You would go in and put your thingamadoohickeys in here, your little blue <laughs> dots and things like that. Uh, undo, 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 undo. Okay. And so now uh, I'm going to go in and edit the sound. I'm going to show you how to do that. You click the edit sound button. Boink. Here we go. And it brings up this interface that you can resize. You're not stuck at this size. You can make it larger or smaller or however you know you need to do and there are handfuls of options up here in this menu now it's my understanding that this video editor was not written by fright ideas but it is licensed out if uh, if what i if i remember correctly what i was told so uh you will find a lot of the same things that are in other uh high-end to low-end music and sound editing programs like if you're familiar with audacity or audition or things like that, you'll recognize a lot of these options here, you know, and some of them you'll probably never mess with. Uh, some of them you might end up using like reverse sound or noise removal, but for the most part, I know I tend to like to do this stuff before I even get to this program. I like to do it in another program, but just so you know, if you don't have another program, the, uh, the options are there for you to play with right there. So, and also if you understand what some of this stuff does, cause not everybody does. Uh, so we have file, which is pretty obvious, save and exit and save, as you can see here. Now, one thing I want to point out is that if you make any changes to this, let's say I crop this and then I X out of this window, you'll notice here this waveform changed. But if I don't hit save or save up here, uh, if I close this, all the changes revert back to where they were. And which is very frustrating, especially if you do a lot of work and then you forget to save it and then you're like, no. So just be aware that that could happen to you. So uh, edit, of course, is your just pretty common edit stuff. Undo is a very handy one there. Uh, tools. This is probably the one you'll use the most uh, on the thing here. You, of course, have things like insert silence. So let's say I want some silence. And uh, this is in milliseconds. A thousand milliseconds uh, equals one second. So let's say 5,000 milliseconds is five seconds. So there you go. That just added five seconds of silence to the beginning of the track. And you can see that moving there and it's being all quiet and everything. There you go. Now, let's say you have a song that has too much silence. You're like, ooh, I don't like that. Let's get rid of that. You can remove the silence by coming in here and adjusting the thresholds and the values and stuff. Generally, default is fine. And boop, there you go. You got rid of the silence at the end, silence at the beginning, and now the song just starts. Right. Okay. So then uh, background sound lets you... Some of these kind of do the same thing. Apply background sound and mix sound file kind of do the same thing because... What I can do is I can take it and put another audio behind this. And generally you might want to do that if you need some sort of ambience over a sound effect. Like let's say you have uh, somebody speaking all creepily or giving uh, you know some sort of instructions, but you want an ambience. And for some reason you have no way of mixing that together. So you would go to background sound or mix sound file. So let's say this comes up here and we'll put in some electro swing. Uh, to go in here like this and now it sits there and thinks about it and boom now I have both like that so um, just that's what that does uh, append sound file means it 
adds a sound file to the end if you select it. It'll throw it up here at the very end. Insert sound file uh, inserts it, I think, where you want it to go. And overwrite with sound file completely overwrites it. Uh, now, if it's shorter than this song, uh, I'll do this with a sound effect here, like that. Uh, what'll happen is it'll go over that. <laughs> And there you go. It'll overwrite like that. And uh, I have had it where it would still keep part of the song when it overwrote it. So just double check that uh, right there. Just be aware that that could happen. And then uh, you have options, which you should never have to mess with this unless for some reason your speakers or headphones are being weird. So uh, don't uh, don't worry about this uh, for the most part like that. So... Uh, now, I'm going to show you how to use Crop here. Crop is uh, when you drag your mouse like this, you'll see it highlights this. And I'm going to uh, I'm going to do this all the way out. And now it's going to crop what's not highlighted, which is this here, like that. And now it gets rid of... Actually, let's say I wanted to start the song like right here. Or I only needed it to go to... Uh, oh, let me do that again. only needed it to go to here. So I'm going to hit Crop like that. <laughs> So it starts it right there. Uh, now let's say I wanted it to fade in. And you'll notice that we have options for fade in and fade out. I can do this and I can uh, fade in. So you'll see it now fades the audio in. Like that. And of course you can do the same thing out down here with fade out. It'll just fade out the music for you if you'd like. And of course you have uh, this little handles that let you adjust this if you for some reason make, make that the wrong size or anything like that. Um, play buttons down here, there's your volume for your player, and of course zoom in, zoom out, and then back to normal. So that's pretty much all, uh, all you need to know about this here. Now again, and let's I'm gonna save this just so the audio actually saves like that. There you go. Uh, and of course, uh, you can also just override this by going to sound and putting a new sound effect in. I can just do this and it'll now upload a completely new audio track for me right there, uh, which lets me go in and do other stuff. Save. Boom. Oh, it's being angry. Right now it's writing a new file to save in the folder. So there you go. Uh, now, there are a few other things you can do that are not inside that editing area. There's another thing here where you have effect, which is next to these two buttons. Now, you notice if you click it, it'll say, hey, make a selection to, to use the effects. What does that mean? It means you go to one of your outputs and you can either do this. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, you can do this. You can just kind of highlight it this way. But I find the easier way to do that is just click here in the output name. It'll highlight the whole thing like this. So now you get a drop down of some different things. Uh, we're not going to go over uh, the sequence effect because that's not, it doesn't deal with audio. We'll do go over that in a different thing later. Uh, you have speech sync digital effects, speech spotlight effects. And this is something uh, we're also not going to go over today. What we're going to go over is the pulse effect right here. So I'm going to bring this up. And you'll notice it's filled in some of the blue spots here. And let me, you can zoom in with, the, with this open. You're not stuck. So I can zoom this in. And what's going to happen is when you adjust this slider, you'll notice it either fills in or it just takes it completely away. And what that means is it's essentially finding the peaks here on the audio and adding an output channel to it. That means you don't, if you're trying to match up lights to the audio, you don't have to go in and be like, click, click, click manually, right? You get to have this added, you know, by the program based on the parameters you set here. You can see that right there. And uh, you have, you can set your own, uh, I believe you can set a, a preset uh, yourself somewhere else. I don't know where. And of course, just like over here, the help file will tell you what some of these things do if uh, if you need them to so uh, that looks pretty good right there now what good what good will this do you well let's say you have a heartbeat sound effect that plays at some point in your room and you would like the audio to pulse with the heartbeat well this lets you do that without having to go in and manually do that you just go in to set the threshold for every heartbeat 
and it matches up with the waveform here and puts in the audio that you would need. So now your lights flicker as you do that. So uh, I, th I think that's really about it. That's really all that uh, is involved with the audio uh, stuff. Uh, as you as I'll, as you saw as you saw, you bring in your sound effects, your audio, things like that, <laughs> whatever. And you edit them, and uh, it's pretty straightforward. But there isn't, uh, there wasn't a lot of documentation on it out there, so I thought I would uh, would make some. So there you go. If you have any questions, of course, leave them in the comments, and we'll do our best to answer them. See you next time.